So <clears throat> I have people tell me all the time and anytime I share a video with you, I just want you to understand that I'm coming to coming to you from a place of I've probably been there in some sense of the word or other. Uh, but people often say to me, you know, I'm struggling with A, I'm struggling with B, I'm struggling with C. And I think that the fact of the matter is that you just have to decide whether you want to change or whether you're okay being complacent in the area of your life that you're struggling in. And I don't care if it's weight loss, relationships, your job, self-love, whatever it is, you have to decide every day, sometimes a hundred times a day, that you are not only ready and willing to make change, but that you have set a plan of action in place so that when those devil, lie, doubt, fear, shame, all of those things start to fill your head, you can say, no, I am a redeemed child of God. I am the head and not the tail. I will accomplish my dreams. I am happy, healthy, confident, flexible. I eat and move according to my goals. I love to learn. Um, you know, whatever that affirmation is that you need to say out loud to remind yourself to whom you belong do that, focus on that and write it down every day. I have found, and I've been really bad at it the past couple of weeks, and I can tell with what's going on with my body and my brain, that when I write down my big goals and my small goals, um, that I move more towards those as time goes on. So if I, I like to make a 2022 goal for uh, my fitness, for my business and for like income, for our family, those kinds of things. So one of those is I want to hit my goal weight. I would like to hit my goal weight by my birthday, which is June 17th. I'm going to be 40. Um, I would like to start earning 1500 to $2,000 a week in my business. So that means doubling what I'm doing now. Um, I would like to pay for our honeymoon. I have these things that in my life I have set as big goals. Um, and so I have to every morning write down the plan of action for those goals. I'm going to do my workout. I'm going to nail my meal plan. I am going to do my workout tracker, which takes me only about an hour. But if I want to double my income, maybe if I have time that day, I'm going to double my efforts. Um, Massive action is what is going to get you to that next goal, but not just like flailing, not just making things up as you go, but having that moment in the morning and saying, okay, Lord, like help me focus on the things that you want me to focus on. Because so many times we can have a plan for our day, right? Like most mornings I wake up, I know exactly what I'm going to do the first two and a half hours of my day. Like I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to do my miracle morning. I'm going to eat breakfast, do my workout, get my first tracker done, those kinds of things. So that is my plan. But sometimes we wake up, we just by habit open Facebook or Instagram and boom, 30 minutes have gone by and we haven't actually done anything. And now we don't have time to push plan our workout or pack our lunch. And so our whole day just goes beyond the wayside. And so you have to be very intentional with the actions that you're taking. In the morning, besides, I don't even have my alarm on anymore. Um, we use D's alarm, but um, when my alarm was going off, that's the only thing I would do. I would shut off my alarm and put my phone back down. And then I wouldn't pick it up again until we were doing a, our Bible study, which is on an app on my phone. Um, and that has helped me to compartmentalize the things during my morning that I need to do in order to stay focused and productive and on task. I'm not saying that this always works for me. About five times out of 10, I'm going to flail and something's going to come up and I'm going to get unfocused and off task. But in those moments when I've, I've written down my goals in the morning, I can more easily, not easily, but more easily say, okay, I kind of got off plan. Lord, help me to focus on the things that I need to do in this moment to move towards that goal that you've set out for me. I feel a constant urge from him to get on camera and to talk to you. Um, I can post and post and post. And sometimes I feel like I get this lengthy post. And then it's like, by the end of it, I've blacked out and it's become my words, not his words. And then I've lost all train of thought or my point that I was trying to get across in the first place. And so, um, 
And he's like, just get on camera and start talking. And throughout these conversations that I have with you, I'm constantly saying in my head, okay, Lord, give me the words. Help me to say the things that you would have me say so that this message comes across as me not proclaiming to be any kind of expert, just sharing with you the things that work for me in my life. And <laughs> as funny as that may sound, I don't ever go back and watch any of my videos that I share. I just hope and pray that whatever I shared along the way is something of use to someone somewhere. Uh, because I know that I have watched videos of Joyce Meyer, Hal Elrod, Brene Brown, um, who else? Shea Bynes. I mean, I get on YouTube, Tony Robbins, all of these people who have some sort of faith-based background. I get on and I listen to them and I talk to them about the challenges that they have overcome. And so then I can say, okay, they've done it. They're sharing. I need to share. I need to share with you the things that are working in my life so that for those, you know, the women in my workout group or the women on my team or the people who follow me on social media can understand that, I am a human. I am someone who fails and sins every single day. I am a human. But that doesn't mean that when I fail and fall short in the morning, I'm just going to give up and just waste my entire day. That's when you stop in that moment, you say that quick prayer for refocus, and you let God lead. And sometimes it's really hard because if you've been a believer for any amount of time, you know that quite often the things we ask for, they don't come right away, right? Especially if it's a big thing. But that's why I like to pray for the small things, like how my hair should be styled through the day or what outfit I should wear so that I don't sweat through my shirt because I am a sweaty human being. Um, and in those moments, he leads and guides me and directs me to a hairstyle that I'm going to feel confident in and to work a uh, an outfit that I feel confident in and that I'm not going to sweat through. And I know that that sounds so small and insignificant, but someone said, I think it was Joyce Meyer. She's like, everything is small to God. He could fix our problems in an instant. He created the world in six days and then he took a nap. How cool is that? The God of the universe who created everything in it thought you were special enough to put here. So don't think that any issue, any task, any problem that you are facing is too small for him. He wants to be a part of every minute detail that you face throughout the day from what to pack in your kids' lunches to what shoes to wear if you're going on a field trip. Like, give it all to God. Give it all to him. He wants it. So then when the big things happen, you're like, okay, Lord, like, I know this one's probably a big ask and I know that you're going to give it to me in the way that you know is right for me when the time is right for me. So you can have, you can build on that faith in the small things. So when the big thing comes and you give that up to him, you're like, you know what? Now I can let it go. I know he's going to provide for me. I know he's going to give it to me. Scripture tells us when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen, right? Like we know that. We know scripture has told us that. And sometimes we just need that gentle reminder. And you know, when it comes to deciding the things that we want in this life, going back to the weight loss, the new job, the relationship, what you give is what you're going to get. If you want more love in your relationship, give more love. If you want um, a better job, give more in your job. If you want to create a healthy lifestyle, excuse me, you have to take steps to create that healthy lifestyle. You get back what you give. What you reap, you sow. The seeds that you plant are what you will harvest. So don't always be expecting, expecting, expecting other people to give to you. You have to give what you want to get. So like for me, I am a beach body coach. So I can provide my girls with everything that they need in order to reach their health and fitness goals. I give them a meal plan that's not a diet. I give them healthy recipes for their kids and their husbands. I give them 30-minute workouts that anyone can do. I provide recipes, grocery lists, accountability, daily check-ins, weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching. I give them all the tools. But they have to choose to do the work in between. They have to choose to put the cookie down to choose water instead of that 3.30 caffeine 
jolt that they think they need when their body actually just needs hydrated. You can ask for all of the tools that you need for your toolbox for whatever that thing is in life that you require more of or better. But until you take the tools out of the toolbox and start to apply them to your life, things are always going to be the same. So you have to decide in six months from now, are you going to have results or the same excuses that you've been carrying around for the last 10 years? For me, what I'm going through with my health, my body, it would be really easy for me to just lay on the couch and feel sorry for myself. But self-pity is a sin. God's called me to do better. And I have to take the results and the end part out of it and just know that the movement that I'm doing today is going to build a stronger future for me. The food choices I make today are going to build better choices for me in the future. And I'm not perfect at this. This past weekend, we had family get-togethers. We, I ate sugar. Like, I had gluten. And today, like, my body's paying for it. That's probably part of the reason that I don't feel very good. That doesn't mean that I just ugh, throw in the towel and give up. I've been doing these programs for six years. I know they work if I work them. I know what my body needs and what my body doesn't need. But I have to continuously decide to feed myself, to fuel myself, to rest myself and hydrate myself towards the goals that I hope to achieve. It's a slow and steady process. It takes years. And a lot of it starts, most of it starts here. I always tell my new people, getting healthy is 80% Nutrition, 20% exercise, 1,000% mindset. Anything that you want to do better in your life, you can, but you have to decide. And not only decide, but you have to make a plan and take the steps that are then going to get you to that point. So, question. What do you want more of in your life? Better relationships or income? A healthier body? a healthier brain? Are you willing to do the work it takes to become the person that you desire to be? Stop looking towards social media. Stop looking for all these fitness gurus. Stop looking to me. Stop looking to all of these people who are out there just trying to do their best. Get in scripture. Get in your Bible. Get in there and see what God says about your health, what God says about your finances, and what God says about your relationships. Because when you start there, everything branches from your faith. I don't care what kind of a new fad diet is out there. I don't care what kind of a get rich scheme is out there. I don't care what new dating app is out there. If you don't first put that faith in Jesus, all of the rest is going to just continue to spiral, to never feel like you really, truly have an idea of what's going on in your life. Give it up. Get your Bible out. Everything that we need in everyday struggle, in everyday goodness, in everyday life, the answers to all the questions that we have are there in scripture. We have to be intentional about the time that we are making to spend with God. I'm not perfect at this. I find myself going through the motions, just going through the habits. You've got to be better. He deserves more. Father, let me seek your face and not your hand. We can do it, but you've got to decide. Are you willing to do the work it takes to become the person you want to become? It's going to be hard work, and only you can decide that. I pray that you search for the right thing. If you need some help and accountability, you know where to find me.